We're here today in Geneva, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Gani Abbas, who is the Vice Chairman of Study Group 15, which is looking at telecommunication transport networks. Good morning, Gani. Oh, good morning, Toby. Thank you. I'm pleased to be here. I was wondering if you could start by just giving us an overview of some of ITU's work in this very important domain. Yeah. Uh, ITUT Study Group 15 is doing a lot of work in optical transmission technology, uh, in the transport network architecture and infrastructure, in the management of the transmission network, home networking, access network. Uh, so they are very busy in developing standard. Obviously with advanced technology, these standards are al always evolving. And w would it be true to say that without these, uh, the, these standards that ITU has created in the transport domain, that the telecommunications and the internet in infrastructure wouldn't, wouldn't function as we know it? Uh, that's absolutely true. I mean, the, the one of the important things in, in, in terms of developing standard is to ensure that uh, the equipment manufactured by the various vendors, they're going to enter work. So, for example, if you are, uh, let's say, a customer and you buy up equipment from vendor A and another, uh, let's say, customer you want to communicate with him and buy his equipment from vendor Y, with art standard, uh, you know, customer uh, who has equipment from vendor X wouldn't be able to speak to the customer from vendor Y. So developing the standard in the ITU facilitate that communication channel between, you know, customer across the globe from the moon to earth, from Mars to Earth, so the standard help to achieve uh, such uh, communication. So you end up really with a networked, connected society. And, uh, but how, how, can the, how can the standards keep up with this constant demand for bandwidth and at the same quality that people have, have, have gotten used to now? Yeah. That, that's true. I mean, if we look at the history of, uh, of the transmission network, they have been progressing over the last 30 years at tremendous uh, pace. The reason for that, because the services have evolved. You know, if we look at the service, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, like what we have now, the demand on the network to cope with such phenomenal growth of traffic is phenomenal. So for us, because the, the services are growing, the demand for bandwidth is growing. Obviously, the technology evolving. So, for example, if you look 10, 15 years ago, we haven't got the same number, let's say, of optical wavelength carried on the same optical fiber and then amount of information carried per optical wave or optical channel on the fiber, it went almost a thousand times. If you look 10 years ago, we were doing something like 10 gig or maybe one gig. Now we're talking about 100 gig moving to 40, 100 gig, and soon will be one terabit. So we're talking about maybe a thousand times the amount of information being transported on this network in a very short time. Uh, that's truly incredible. And th th that demand, though, uh, clearly increases the demand for, for power and, and energy. How, in the, in, in with climate change being such a, a great concern now, how uh, are we dealing with that? Yeah. I mean, the ITU st uh, study, uh, study group uh, five, I believe, is looking at this uh, uh, issue. Uh, and it's becoming an extremely important issue because as the power grow, uh, or sorry, as the bandwidth requirement or need is a growth means as the data increase so because there's this phenomenal uh, growth in the data on the network obviously need more power to power this system we and study group 15 we are very conscious of that and we have been designing the standard to cope with one of the thing is to optimize this system to minimize the power consumption so that is always one of the focus in terms of developing these standards that's very good to hear. Well, thank you very much for joining us here today, Gani. Thank you, Toby.